Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. And in today's project, we're actually going to turn a direct TV satellite dish into a sundial. We want a equatorial sundial, a sundial that will be based off of the Enoch calendar that can not only tell us when the equinox is, but uh, using uh, Enoch's um, book of the luminaries, we hope to design this uh, so that the end product would be able to tell us what month we're in. Um, we are anticipating a time when we won't have man's calendars to help us to know when the feast days are. And all we will be left with is our father's calendar, which consists of the moon and the sun. And so we plan to use this um, um, a satellite dish and actually create something that will help us to... Um, uh, um, be able to know what time it is based on the position of the sun. Now, this is something that we recycled. We went and found it over in our uh, junk pile there, um, metal recycling pile. So excuse it for being so dirty. But the main reason why we are going to use this is because of this sophisticated apparatus that's back here on the back here. You see how it has so many uh, dials, and I have to apologize for the uh, shades as well. But it has dials on it to where we can precisely tune this thing in. Once we get it pretty much set the way we want it, we um, will be able to make fine adjustments with those two little knobs there. And so that's why we want to actually use this, um, this setup here. And being that it has a metal pole and um, it's actually all metal, it should be able to withstand um, the hurricanes, the rains, the floods, even the fires um, that we are expecting in the apocalypse. And so after the apocalypse, you know, if we get this right and, you know, man and the beast system is completely shut down, um, we'll still be able to know when uh, the Sabbath days and the feast days are, which, of course, is important for you know anybody who plans to survive the tribulation you know that's probably the most important thing we can do you know going into this tribulation is to be keeping the feast days and of course we'll want to keep them after the feast days as well now um, the first thing I did to um, start working on this and I want to document it that's why I'm making these videos I want to document my efforts the first thing I did was I had to take a pair of pliers reach in and loosen up that bolt right there that you see um, on the right side of the knob there um, I couldn't use a uh, couldn't use a um, um, socket wrench as I've been doing for the rest of it because of how close it is to that pole right there so I just took a pair of pliers and it loosened up pretty easily and what that did was it let me use it to get the full range of motion right there it allowed me to uh, move it that way to get the full range of motion and then once I get it pretty much set then I'll be able to use that dial to tune it in as I need to but one thing that um, I've noticed so far um, in my area here in Alabama we are at about 30, I think it's 31 degrees, I'd have to look it up. We're at about 31 degrees, and the way I calculate it, uh, we, to the equinox, the sun should be at 90 minus 31, so at about 59 degrees. And I'm having a hard time reaching 59 degree, degrees um, at the front of this when I tilt it up. And um, I can barely get there, but I'm having a hard time. Let me show you what I mean. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, you see right here where I got my protractor slash level kind of thingy there pointing at uh, zero. That would be the way it would be set if we were at the equator. It would be at exactly zero. Um, the sun would be directly over our head. But being that we are in Alabama, we need to get to about um, 59 degrees. Again, that's uh, 30, uh, 90 degrees minus 59 degrees. But when we try to, um, when we scroll up, you see that you have a hard time getting to uh, 59. Um, the, low, the most we can get out of this 
is uh, about 45 before we start sliding it down to get a, a better position. Slide it down, Chris, to the bottom. When we start sliding it down, we can get to 59 somewhere about right there, maybe a little bit higher, but that's uh, pretty close. And we, you know, understand some people may be, you know, um, a little uh, higher north, and so they may need um, a different position. So one thing I'm gonna do to solve this problem is I'm gonna switch this uh, plate around in the back. So we have this uh, plate that's right here and it is, see how it is, um, if I can get it in the picture, see how it's protruded at the top and a um, little bit tighter at the bottom. I believe if I take that plate off and switch it around, give me a stick or something, Chris. This plate right here is what I'm talking about. I'm gonna take it and I'm going to rotate it around uh, 180 degrees and put um, this longer part at the bottom. And I think that's going to help me get a better range of motion here. So let's go ahead and do that. Just taking these few bolts apart and switching it around. All right, turns out I wasn't able to um, switch it around like I thought it was. I thought I was just gonna be able to switch that plate around right there. But the way they have these bolts designed in that groove right there, they won't, you, you can't do it. They made it so you can't actually install that part of it upside down. Um, you see that little um, piece of metal that's bridging right there, it blocks the bolt. You would actually have to cut that out or drill through it and to uh, make it to where you can flip this thing around but you know praise the lord we did get another solution and that is to actually flip the disc around to take those four bolts that you see right there for the um holding the slimline disc on was actually able to flip the whole thing around and uh make it to where now it uh it appears to be upside down but we get the full uh range of motion um let's see how what that degree angle is right there whereas before we would have barely been able to get 59 degrees and even doing so would have put our um uh little rod our celestial pole would have been too low we wanted in the middle of the disc and to get 59 degrees we would have had to stick it way down at the bottom but now that we have turned it upside down you see that we can get well above 59 degrees and we're closer to 65 degrees so <clears throat> so i guess what that all means is if you're closer to the equator and you try to do this um you may uh, be able to leave it like it was but you know as you go north um, you're going to um, run into a problem and the solution would be just to flip this around to where you um, get more uh, you, you just get a better angle when you flip it around but the maximum that's the maximum right there 65 degrees uh, so you can do the math uh, what's 90 minus 65 Chris 25. So as long as you are uh, below 25 degrees or, um, um, you, you know, you can use your uh, celestial pole in the middle. Otherwise, your celestial pole is going to have to be somewhere else on this on this thing. All right. So we're looking good so far. Actually looking pretty good so far. I believe the next thing to do is actually get a celestial pole and stick it through here. Put us a hole in it. And actually get us a pole. Looks like it's going to work. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we made it to the store. And we got a few items here to um, complete our project. We have our uh, celestial pole here. We're just going to use some all-threaded rod. That cost us about uh, 5 or $6 for about 3 feet of it. We'll cut it off till about two feet or so, giving us uh, some room for adjustments. Um, may not cut it at all, um, just in case. If it doesn't work, we'll take it back to the store, you know us. Um, we got us uh, some uh, paint here. First, we got some primer to get rid of the direct TV uh, uh, sign there. We're gonna prime it. 
and I'm gonna leave it primed and I don't know if that's gonna be a good idea or not we'll find out in a minute and then I got some uh, paint here this is actually some uh, paint that they will put on a car uh, my wife suggested this because it's metal and we'll use it it's supposed to come with a brush and a marker so we'll be able to draw some lines on the primered metal uh, we got so, some nuts and bolts well I got some washers and nuts in order to uh, keep our pole pretty stabilized we didn't get the thickest pole because we didn't want it to uh, be too heavy or whatever you know it, it, we're thinking it was gonna be about two feet long I had to get me a drill in order to drill my hole and you see right there I have my um, middle of my disc uh, right there so I'm gonna drill me a hole right there and then I'm going to prime it and then after I prime it then we'll go ahead and um, uh, uh, put it all together here see what it looks like all right so that's about the way it's going to look we'll be uh, um, painting some uh, what they call sundial furniture on it but you see it's very simple it's just going to be um, what they call the celestial pole casting a shadow on the old um, dish and we've gone on and tightened it down um, I wanted this little area to be the smallest possible so I just used uh, one nut and one washer um, the idea is that when the uh, sundial doesn't when the celestial pole doesn't make a shadow then we're either at the equalox or the equal nux equal lux or the equal nox i haven't decided which one i'm gonna set it to yet but um that's 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 pretty much it right there let me show you the back of it that's the part that will be attaching to the pole um probably looks upside down or whatever um but i wanted to show you this part down here if on this particular uh dish it has this mountain area here where the old head went and we used that as a stabilizer to help stabilize the celestial pole so we put some big washers in there hope you can see it you probably can see it better than i can right now but um you see how we did that and then so we'll be attaching it to the pole next all right so i got it temporarily attached to the pole just wanted to show you guys why it is that we used um this uh, particular apparatus um, because it has so many dials that we could dial this thing in uh, just perfectly um, we're not quite yet ready to do that um, um, we got to pretty much wait on the Sun at this point we want to um, uh, get it lined up uh, with the Sun we'll use our we use our calculations using trigonometry to uh, get it roughly right but we're actually going to line it up uh, to the Sun so we got to wait for the time but let me show you something right quick all right I'm going to attempt to create an optical illusion here showing you how this would actually work so in the morning time it will cast the shadow uh, kind of like that and then as time passed throughout the day the shadow would actually move and you would be able to track time uh, throughout the day um, so you know how many uh, hours or how much uh, time is left in a day but the main thing of this sundial is not necessarily to track time um, I mean we don't really care what time it is now none of us have watches or anything here on the homestead but uh, what we're trying to do is understand uh, when the um, the seasons are when the month starts and the way this will work uh, if I could show you here, let me let me create that illusion. Okay, I'm going to attempt this, but um, the way this should work is you'll come out at uh, at high noon uh, when the um, uh, sun is directly overhead to get an idea, or not to get an idea, but to understand what month you're actually in, what um, Hebrew month, what um, 
uh, sacred month you're in, we'll have to draw some lines on here to actually let us know. But what you're looking at now would be closer to, I believe, about uh, May or or something like that, uh, late March or early, or May maybe even getting close to june um is the way it'll look and then as the months tick by every day you came out you would notice that the shadow would increase matter of fact that right there where you see no shadow whatsoever say i went from shadow to no shadow that would actually be the equinox or the equilux like i said i'm not sure um how i'm actually going to set this thing but it it will be so that's the date of the um equinox um but then as time passed on you would start to see the shadow uh cast up higher that's how you would know that you're actually uh the days have started to get longer or shorter like i said i'm not sure if i'm doing this the right way but you get the idea like you come out uh one month and it will be right here and then you wait about 30 days and the shadow would look more like that and then you wait a little more time and the shadow would look more like that. And then when you start to get in the second half of the year, the shadow would be down there. Right. And so that's how we'll use it to determine uh, which month we're in. All right. So now that's that'll be how it'll look when it gets set. Again, I keep saying I'm not sure if I'm going to set it to the Equinox or the Equilux. Um, the difference is uh, the equal lux is actually the first day of the year, whereas the equal knocks is kind of um, the first day of spring or something like that. Um, I probably will go with the equal lux. I'm not really sure. The thing about it, the globe itself is set to the equal knocks instead of the equal lux. So I may go with that. I'm not sure. But I've set it right there. Um, of course, I haven't tightened anything down yet. Um, it's still a swivel on me, um, but I set it right here um, to because I'm going to go eat breakfast right now. So I've set it right there as if it was 12 o'clock noon on the equinox, and I'll come back after breakfast and I'll see how it's actually moved on me. That time that I left it was at almost exactly 10 o'clock on January the 19th. And so I'll go back out there, like I said, after breakfast, and we'll look again at what uh, what time it is so we can see um, how much it moved in that short amount of time. All right. I was in the U.S. Army. You know, the first thing they teach you in the military is how to eat fast. So we're here um, at about uh, 13 minutes later, about 15 minutes later, and so we'll see where the sun moved on us. All right, so that's how much it moved in uh, about 15 minutes, about 13 minutes. So we should, we're gonna take a measurement of that and measure because we saw the time, we didn't see the exact time, but we're within we're within a minute or so and we can see uh, what it did. Yeah, about an inch and a quarter in about 15 minutes. And so we got a 15 inch uh, dial rod there so that gives us an idea of uh, of uh, how this thing will move when we get it set correctly. All right, so there it is, y'all. It's uh, pretty much complete. We got it all tightened down. Everything is secure. It's set at the correct angle. Um, we have even started to um, write in what they call the dial furniture you can see we've been marking throughout this day here um just putting just to kind of see how our hyperbolic curve will look we do know that it's going to be a hyperbolic curve let me see if i can ever get out of the shade get out of the shade here but we actually started uh writing our lines on there i hope you guys can see them i really can't out here in the sun but um you see it's going to be a hyperbolic curve uh, going forward today, I'm writing it in pencil just because I wanted to see how it's going to look. Um, this day really doesn't mean anything as far as the Enoch calendar. Um, if you ever read Enoch chapter 72, um, it points out specific days. And so uh, I've set my calendar hoping to come in on those specific days and do this exact same thing, which is write out uh, the times in which, um, um, to, well, write out the 
the the uh uh pattern i guess what it's called the route or the line or whatever this is so that we'll be able to know when the enoch months are changing but the way to work um guys you see right here i'll go ahead and write this one in that time that line i just wrote there um it's about uh 2 30 or so right now um and i think today is uh january the 20th so if you were to come back at exactly this same time exactly one year from now that this dial will be pointing at that exact same mark right there and that's how we'll use it to calculate uh the months to know what seasons we're in um we'll do a follow-up on this after we get it all laid out i'm not sure how long that's going to be so i go ahead and close this video out um but maybe the next time you guys see this it'll have all of the markings on it for the enoch months and maybe even the, the uh, enoch times there are actually 18 um uh portions of a day on an enoch clock so um we'll have that marked out as well maybe by the next time you see it but again we made this out of an old satellite dish um what 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 all do we have to get chris for building it yeah um from the store we had to get a metal rod some washers and nuts yeah and a bag of cement and some paint but you know the most expensive thing was probably the paint yeah the paint, paint was the most expensive thing um and we still got a little bit more paint we only got primer on it now I'm going to get me some exterior paint and a paintbrush and start to paint in the markings on it. But, so, it's a very cheap project. And, you know, these things are built to last. Uh, they're built to withstand all of the elements. So, it, should, it shouldn't go anywhere, you know. It should withstand, you know, anything we could throw at it. So, um, if you guys got anything out of this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But, leave us a comment either way. If you actually decide to do one, let us know. You know, hopefully somebody else will find this a good idea to actually make a sundial out of an old satellite dish. But anyway, shalom.